stand still, you hear? Just because you happen to be the prettiest thing inside of a red wagon don't mean you can put on airs with me. No, sir. As far as I'm concerned, you're still just a bushy-tailed range pony, and don't you forget it. How's it going, big brother? Hi, yeah, short shanks. Yeah, if it's any better, I'd take his frame up. Oh, short shanks, huh? You better watch what you call me. I'll jump up on a stump and punch you in the knee. <laughs> This is about the flossiest looking crow bait I ever did see. Yeah, sure she is. That's why you just give your right arm for her, that's all. Uh, I don't know about my right arm. I might give her a nice stall in the back of the barn if she didn't have enough sense to get in out of the rain. <laughs> She's too pretty for a range horse. What are you going to do with her? Oh, I thought I might, might make a gift out of her. A gift? Yep. After you hand fed and raised this filly from a colt, you're just going to give her away? Must be a pretty important reason. Well, uh, yep. Sort of thought I might, uh, might make a, an engagement present out of her. Oh, yeah? Who's getting married? Me and Margie Owens. I hope. Hey, now, now look, you, you're, not, you're not spoofing me, are you? I don't think so, Joe. Hey, Joe, wait a minute. What do you mean, wait a minute? This is the real Huckleberry. It's the greatest news ever. It's a real Huckleberry. Oh, Hoss, I don't know what to say. You better grab a hold of the holder on that filly, because I'm going to yell. No, Joe, wait a minute. No, no. Yeah! Joe, hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. What did Pa say? Well, I ain't had a chance. I... Yeah, come on. No, tell wait me. a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, Pa. I... Close the windows and bar the doors. I got the greatest news since Kelsey's hog found gold. What the hell is about? Sound like you got your foot caught in a bear trap. Hey, now, will you hear this? All right, brace yourselves. Go ahead and tell them. Well, come on, tell them. Oh, dad, burn it, Paul. Little Joe's always too All right, quickness. I'll tell him myself. Hoss is going to get married. Look, it's too late in the day for this sort of nonsense. Now, wait a minute, Potter. This isn't nonsense. Now, Hoss is going to get married. He's going to marry Margie Owens. Now, look, Margie Owens is a very nice girl, and I won't have you joking about her this way. Paul, I'd be the last person in the world to joke about Margie. The fact is, it's truer than true. I do want to marry Margie, but... But that burn it, little Joe's always wait, wait, jumping wait, wait, off wait, the wait, deep wait, end. Wait, 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 wait. You mean it? Yes, sir. You mean it? You, 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 you really mean it? You really want to get married? You're going to get married? <laughs> That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Wonder I didn't think you had that much sense in you. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> well, you're the luckiest guy in the world. She's much too good for you. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen to me a minute. It's a fact. I, I want to marry Margie. But that don't mean she wants to marry me. Well, what does it mean? Oh, I ain't even asked her yet. She loves you, doesn't she? Yeah, I think well, so. so what's wrong? What are you worried about? Well, now that ain't necessarily so, Joe. I ain't such an all-fired bargain. Oh, come on, come on. Well, don't make no difference. I ain't gonna take no chances. I'll take plenty of time, and then I'm gonna ask her. You know that 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 uh, level piece of ground right near Rocking Chair Butte? That'd be a perfect place for the house, wouldn't it? Just right. They got the whole valley to look at. Yeah, hey, hey, and you know, there's a lot of sweet water up there too. Hey, hey, what are you three talking about? Planning a house for you and Margie. Come on, let's take a look at the map. There must be about five thousand acres there. God, I gotta run an errand, Margie. I, I promised Paul I'd pick up a saddle. It won't take but a minute. I hope you don't mind. Of course. It's all right. I don't mind at all. Take your time. Is 
something wrong, Hoss? No, I... Everything's just... just fine, Marty. Just fine. So anyway, <clears throat> I rode back over the hill and I came back in that little draw from the other side and there was that old big mama bear and them two little cubs as pretty as you please. <laughs> yeah, want some more potatoes, Hoss? Yeah, get one spoon. What did Hennessy say about those window frames? Well, we, he said we could have them if there wasn't any hurry. I told him there didn't seem to be any. Window frames? For what? For a house we're going to build near Rocking Chair Butte, remember? Oh, yeah. Uh, not that we want to hurry you or anything like that. Oh, no, that'd be the last thing you'd want to do. But we do think you're being lazy, shiftless, selfish, and downright cowardly about the matter. I'm lazy, shiftless, selfish, and a dirty coward. And on top of all that, I'm scared, Paul. But, Hoss, we're going to have a party. Food and dancing, Saturday the 10th. For all our friends and neighbors, right here in the Ponderosa. Now, I'd like to make the announcement then. Well, that gives you 10 full days to do your part. Yeah, but, Paul, what if I'm still scared? Well, I'll ask her. Paul, I, I don't think she'd marry you. Tell her I mean. <laughs> you big ox. <laughs> saying I am so. The way the trees frame the view, it's, well, it's like an artist had set them there. As if each one were something very special. Hoss, are you in love with me? Really and truly in love? Well, I, I was going to sort of sneak up on it. Tell you that I, I love you so much I can't hardly stand it. Then I was, I was going to ask you to be my wife, and I still am when I work up enough courage. Hoss. And then this view here, I was going to ask you if maybe you'd like a house right here on this very spot. Wait. Paul and Adam done they done bought the window frames for it. Listen. I'm sorry, Margie. I, I guess I got sort of carried away with myself. I ain't even asked the main question yet, have I? Hoss Cartwright, if you'd stop talking so much, well, maybe I could get a word in edgewise. All right. As long as that word ain't no. Well, any normal, practical girl could think of nothing nicer than, than a husband like you and, and a house right here. But what, Margie? Well, I've lived around here all my life, and, and I've known you for years and years. And I know what it would be like, but... Well, I want to see the world far away from here. All the wonderful, romantic places I, I've only read about. Don't you understand, Horse? Oh, yeah, Margie, I understand. All girls like to do that sort of thing. I'll tell you what. I'll take you to San Francisco on our honeymoon. San Francisco? Hoss, I'm talking about the whole wide world, and, and you offer San Francisco. Well, Margie, the whole world can wait. We're young, there's plenty of time. Who says we won't see the world? Do you think so, Hoss? Really and truly? Absolutely. That is, unless you're too busy taking care of the kids. Oh, Hoss. I tell you what, Paul's going to have a party Saturday night. We'll announce it then. Well, I don't know that. That's so soon. And we haven't talked to Papa yet. All right. I'll come calling tomorrow night. And you tell your Paul that I'll be asking that certain question. 
Margie. Yes, Hoss? You reckon... Well, what I mean is... Is that what you were asking? Yes, ma'am. It sure was. It's a whole fired spooked. It's me that's got to go in there and talk to the man, not you. I ain't spooked. A little palsied. Have you to call? <laughs> Margie, tonight was the night, wasn't it? I, I was supposed to come call tonight. You talked to your pa, didn't you? Uh, won't you come into the sitting room, Mr. Cartwright, and meet our other guest? Huh? It, Margie, Margie, did, did you talk to your pa? Oh, well, that's perfectly sweet of you. Thank you. Uh, now, may I take your hat? <laughs> that gum it, I guess I guess I left in the buggy. Margie, you got me so dang mixed up. <laughs> This is Mr. Mark Connors, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright, a great pleasure to meet you, sir. How are you, sir? Mr. Owens? Good evening, Oz. Owens, sit down. Yes, sir. Mr. Connors came to discuss mining properties with Papa. He was telling us about his adventures in Africa and all over the world. Would you go on, Mr. Connors? Oh, yeah. I'm sure that Mr. Cartwright would be bored. I know that he's got many more interesting things to relate. No, they, they ain't much ever happens around here. Not like in Africa. You go on, Mr. Connors. Mr. Connors was telling us about a trip he made to the island of Zanzibar. It is exciting, isn't it, Papa? Uh, yes, as, as Mr. Owens just said, I was, um, I was telling him about Zanzibar. Now, there's a name to conjure with Mr. Cartwright. Zanzibar. Island of spices. Any offshore breeze carries the scent of the cloves many, many miles out to sea. And yet, with this exotic aroma, there exists another one far less bewitching. I ask you to believe that, oh, not more than a quarter of a mile from palaces of unbelievable luxury, there exist stockades where men, women, and children are caged like animals. Oh, blackamoors, yes, captured in the deep jungles of darkest Africa, but human nonetheless, incapable as you and I are of pain and misery and heartache. If it isn't the well-traveled Mr. Connors. Kathy, what the devil are you doing here? Obviously waiting for you, Mark. I told you to wait in San Francisco. I told you to wait in San Francisco. The last time you told me to wait in St. Louis, I waited three years. Now look here. You take this bag and get back to Frisco. Just like that, huh? Just crawl off in a hole somewhere until the big promoter decides to whistle. Well, I'm not going! Oh, no, no. Now, listen to me, Kathy, my darling. Look, I'm involved in a very important business deal. Now, if you come here to cause trouble, you're going to ruin Trouble, the... Mark? When you're trying to make money for us? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I might have known. Yeah. You could have written, you know. I would have sent the money to you. There was no need to come all the way up here. Thank you, Mark. 
I can use this. You've taught me very expensive tastes. This isn't why I rode that dirty, back-breaking stage all the way up here. Oh, no? Then, uh, why? I just don't trust you. <laughs> this little business deal you're involved in. What's Miss Plain Jane Owens got to do with it? Oh, that. Oh, nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. Incidentally, how long have you been in town, huh? Only since this afternoon. Oh. But this is a very small place, Mark. It has the usual gossips. It just took me about one hour to find out all about you and Miss Owens. Oh, now, listen to me, Kathy. Miss Owens is an only child and the apple of her father's rich heart. And she's got a great influence on him. And you have a great influence on her. Exactly. So, you see, you mustn't interfere now, Kathy. Remember... Under our agreement, you stand to gain just as much as I do, huh? All right, Mark. I will go, and I will wait, but not for long. Because remember, under our agreement, if I wanted to, I could blow your little scheme sky high. Oh, my sweet, my dear, sweet, cynical little Kathy. Isn't there anyone in this whole wide world that you trust, huh? Not in your world. May I tell you, your daughter is as light as a feather. Dancing with her is sheer delight. Her ma was like that, too. Mr. Cartwright, I want to thank you. Your uninvited guest is having the time of his life. Oh, Mr. Connors, you're more than welcome. Everyone within the sound of music is welcome at this party. Gracious of you, sir, gracious. You got a minute for an old friend, Miss Owens? Of course, old friend. Keep them closed tight. Put your hands over them. I don't trust you. <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> Keep them tight. Don't you pee. Okay. Right around this way. Now open your eyes. Oh. <laughs> oh, great day in the morning. Would you look at this? <gasps> oh, she, she's beautiful. Oh, where in the world did you... Oh, is this Junebug? That scrawny little thing you picked up on the range? That's her. Oh, she's grown into a beauty. Uh, where you been keeping her? Oh, out of sight, I... Saving her, I guess. Saving her for what? Well, if I had her, I'd parade her every chance I got. Well, I, I reckon I was saving her for a present all along. Just didn't know it. Hmm? A present? Well, I couldn't think of a better one. Hey, who are you going to give her to? I was kind of figuring on making her a, an engagement present to you, Margie. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know where my mind was. I, I just didn't think. That's all right. I was kind of hoping that... Well, that we could make the announcement tonight. And I didn't speak to Papa, did I? 
Well, that's my job, but that burnt, I, I couldn't get a word in edgewise the other night. Oh, I am a foolish, mixed-up girl, and I'm hurting you. Oh, no, you're not. Why do you, you just still got some of those funny notions about the big, wide, wide world out there or something? It's so hard for me to make up my mind. Well, old Judy here is yours anyhow. And I'll talk to your papa tonight if I have to hog time. Go on, I'll be in in a minute. Good cigar you got there, Owens. Got a nice, rich smell. What do you want, Gilbert? I want my money back from that little deal we had together. That business deal failed. We both lost money. You can afford to lose money, but I can't. That seems to me if you could include me in another deal. If this is blackmail, I... A little trouble, Mr. Owens. Stay out of this, dude. Thank you, Mark. I think Mr. Gilbert has said all he's going to say. Hey, what happened? I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Cartwright. This is a devil of a way for a guest to act. Well, how did it get started? Well, uh, Gilbert there threatened me, and when Connors came on the scene, Gilbert attacked him. Well, it'll be all right, though, Margie. I, Miss Owens, uh, he'd been drinking, I expect. Uh, perhaps we should go, Mr. Owens, before this gentleman wakes up and causes us some more trouble. Oh, yes, of course. Matter of fact, Margie, I was looking for you when this happened. Come along, uh, my dear. Uh, Mr. Owens, I, there's something I want to talk to yes, you Yes, but not tonight, Hoss. We really must be going. Margie. Well, I'm sorry, Hoss. Good night. I wish it'd hit you even harder. Been waiting long? Well, some. You know, it said one o'clock. Uh, how was Mr. Gilbert after we left? He's all right. I think his head was hurting more from the liquor than it was the fight. However, that Connors throws a pretty good punch. Hoss, please forgive me. After making you wait so long, I'm going to say no, I can't marry you. I thought it was all set. I thought all I had to do was talk to your Paul. I'm going to be married to someone else in a month. Someone else? This is the first I knew that you had anybody else in mind. Well, I didn't until a few days ago. Oh, Hoss, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to hurt you. Please forgive me. Listen, Hoss. What's that to listen to? Well, I, I had a speech. But now I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. It's all right, Margie. I hope you'll be very happy. You and... Who is it, anyhow? Mark Connors. I should have known. Him and... All his talk about Zanzibar and... and foreign places. Well, that's just it, Hoss. We're going to do all sorts of wonderful things together. We're going to travel all over the whole wide world. The whole world, huh? About 
Das läuft, Marty. Boss, I'm sorry I can't be what you want me to be. I I'll return Junebug. Yeah. I reckon June would be much good at traveling around the world. Make sure you eat every bit of that. I don't want Horst to come back and find you all spindly. Hey, Joe, did you turn that team of bays out of the corral? Adam said that... <sighs> I got to thinking about Horst. Kind of helps to come out here and see the filly. Yeah. I come out here, too. So does Adam. And the three of us are going to feed that filly to death. Look, I think I ought to go after him. He's been gone for almost a month now. Oh, Joe, uh, you know, you could help him mend a broken leg or broken arm, but a broken heart he has to mend by himself. He'll be back when he's ready. What about the wedding Sunday? Are we going? Well, George Owens has been a neighbor for a good many years. Marge has been almost part of the family more than a neighbor. I think we should go to the wedding. I guess you're right. George? Well? It's a proud day in your life. Proud as can be. I've got a fine daughter in Margie, if I do say so myself. Yes, you have. And I'm getting a fine son-in-law, too. Been all the way around the world, Mark has. Knows things you wouldn't believe. Time you went in, George. Your daughter's waiting for you. Yes. Ben, is Hoss coming to the wedding? Marge asked. I'm afraid not, George. I, I haven't heard from him or seen him for about a month. I'm sorry. Might as well get on inside. I've come a long way to see Marge get married. I don't want to miss it. I take Mark Connors to my wedded husband and plight my troth till death do us part. Whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder.
prettiest girl in the whole world, aren't you? You look fine. You look happy. I hope it's that way for you always. Thank you, Hoss. Kiss her right. Please. Connors, I've got the finest girl in the whole world. Congratulations. Why, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, Paul. Margie's father's in the house. He wants to see you. Seems to be rather important. It's her marriage, Haas. I'm afraid Margie's made a terrible mistake. And I'm to blame for having encouraged her to marry him. She need help? I don't know. I honestly don't know. You don't know? Ain't you wrote to her? Ain't she wrote to you? Yes, we corresponded at first. There was nothing in her letters to indicate there was any real trouble. Of course, she was disappointed that their round-the-world trip was continually postponed, but she was still looking forward to it. Then I began to hear just from Connors. And? It followed a pattern. He kept asking for more money, in addition to the substantial sum I'd given them as a wedding present. That don't sound like Margie. As I say, the letters were from Connors. I finally wrote Margie, protesting their extract... Extra... Mr. Owens. Harry, sit down here. You, you all right, Mr. Uh, Owens? It's, it's, it's nothing, Hoss. I'll be all right. Here, drink this. Thanks. These la last few months, my worrying over Margie. Mr. Owens, you just rest. Take it easy. Some time ago, Margie finally wrote me. She told me she just learned that Connors had been bilking me out of money and asked me not to send him anymore. She said she was leaving Connors. I was not to try to find her. She was ashamed and humiliated. There was another woman. Where was she at that time? In San Francisco. I answered immediately and begged her to come home, but there was no reply. You want me to try? I'd go myself, Hoss, but the doctor says my heart won't stand it. If Margie's in real trouble, she'll need strength, not weakness. What was her last address? Didn't leave an address? It's a saloon on Coster Street. The woman said she worked there. I heard Margie call her Kathy. Thank you, ma'am. I'll find her. How will it be, friend? I'm looking for a woman named Kathy. Does she work here? A woman named Kathy owns half this place. What do you want her for? I need to ask her some questions. 
Ask away, big man. Howdy, ma'am. Are you Kathy? I'm Kathy. What can I do for you? Ma'am, I'm, I'm looking for Margie. Connors. What makes you think that I can help you? I think you can. Now then, who are you and why are you looking for Margie? My name is Cartwright. Most folks call me Hoss. I'm a good friend of Margie's and her father's. Her father sent me here to find her. The rich Mr. Owens. Did he send any money? Nope, just me. That's too bad. Margie could better use money in her condition. What condition? She's gonna have a baby. She's as well as any woman could be, having a baby by a man like Mark Connors. Where is she? I want to I see her. What do you plan to do? I'm going to take her home where she belongs. Well, home is where she belongs. All right, my big friend. I'm going to trust you. I don't know why, since you're a man. She's at the district hospital, and here's how you get there. Doctor will be right out, Mr. Cartwright. Please be seated. Thank you, ma'am. This your first? Hi. This your first? Baby, I mean. Oh. My fourth. All girls up to now, but I'm sure it's going to be a boy this time. I told my wife. Hey, Doc, are you Dr. Duffy? You must be Mr. Cartwright. Yes, sir. Hi, is she Margie? I mean, can I see her? Yes, of course, but I can't understand why some member of her family hasn't contacted her now. Doc, nobody can find her. I don't worry she wanted anybody to see her or something. Well, frankly, she still doesn't want to see anyone. It's a very troublesome attitude, Mr. Cartwright. A very serious lack of spirit, of hope, even of will to live. You just let me see her. She ain't got nothing to worry about, Doc. I hope so. Her attitude has me very worried. Come on, I'll take you to her room. She needs to be with someone she knows. I hope you can help her. Margie? Margie. It's me, Hawes. Go away, please. Go away. I don't want you to look at me. Margie, you ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm coming to take you home. Hoss. I've been such a fool, made such a mess. Margie, all oh, that's done with now. Like I said, I, I come to take you home. Dear Hoss, I thought I didn't want to see anyone anymore. But now I'm glad you came. Papa. He'd have come himself, but he said, Dad, burn sick of worrying about you. But as soon as I get you back, you'll be all right. If anything happens, will you make sure the baby gets to Papa? You listen to me. You and, and me and that baby are going to go right back to the Ponderosa, and we're going to build that house just like we planned. <laughs> Margie, what's the matter? It's just a pain. Doc, Doc, come here. They're coming. Is he still hurt? Oh, it's just a pain. 
pain, Hoss. All women have them when they have babies. It doesn't hurt so much now. Archie, I promise you that as long as you live, there ain't nothing else gonna ever hurt you in the whole wide In the whole wide world. Hoss, wasn't I foolish when I had it all right in front of me? All right, Mr. Cartwright, you can go on back to the waiting room. I'll see you there. I'll be waiting for you, Margie. Then we'll go home. Yes, Hoss. Sorry, Mr. Cartwright. Sorry. I was afraid of it. That lack of spirit, the will to live, just not there. Please give my sincere regrets to her family. But the baby's a fine girl. Healthy, pretty, just like her mother. She should be a comfort to the family. And I think in about 10 days, she'll be able to travel. That should give you time to get a nurse to help you. In the meantime, I can be reached right here at the hospital through the next 10 days. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. I'm sorry to hear it, Mr. Cartwright. I tried to help her, but I couldn't help her want to live. appreciate everything you've done. I need one more favor. What is it? I've got to have somebody to help me take care of the baby on the way back to Virginia City. Do you know anybody? Yes, I think I can find somebody for you. Don't they think we ever close? Kathy. Well, 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 Mr. Cartwright. Aren't you a long way from home, sir? I told you I'd come after you, Connor. Oh, please, Mr. Cartwright, don't be a hero. In the first place, I can outdraw you. And the second reason, I imagine you can feel in your back. I thought you worked for me. Only part-time, my dear Kathy. The rest of the time for me. He knows where the money comes from. And I imagine you've been satisfied with your share of it, too. Neither one of you is fit to live. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I'm terribly sorry that you're being unreasonable. I had hoped that your obvious feeling for my dead wife would persuade you to act as an emissary to her father on behalf of my baby daughter, of course. Oh, yes, yes, I know. John there keeps me well informed about everything that happens. What are you going to do, Mark? What any loving father would do, I'm going to claim my child. Oh, no, you ain't. Oh, no, you ain't. Margie's baby's going back with me. Oh, don't be stupid, Cartwright. Legally, the baby is mine. Of course, I, uh, I could be tempted to change my mind now, couldn't I? Why don't you go back to Mr. Owens and tell him that I will relinquish all rights to my daughter for a price, huh? Oh, Mark. You don't miss a trick, do you? <laughs> Not if I can help it, no. Uh, if you attempt to go for your gun, I'm afraid one of us is going to have to kill you first. In uh, self-defense, of course. Oh. <laughs> that was a very fine gesture, Mr. Cartwright, but I fail to see what you're going to accomplish by it. I'm going to kill you. 
huh? <laughs> In view of the present circumstances, isn't that going to be rather difficult? Hmm? miserable human being. But they don't hang men for that. They do for shooting down an unarmed man. You ain't gonna pull that trigger, Connors. You ain't got the guts to hang, Connors. take care of it. You take Margie's baby home. Turn June bug loose? Yep. What's the idea? You hand raise her, then you turn her loose and let her go wild again. She'll be happier out there on the ranch. I'll keep an eye on her, and maybe one of these days she'll have a coat. I can raise it for Margie's little girl. <laughs> 